Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. Today we are going to be talking about turbocharged petrol engines. What exactly is turbocharged petrol engines? First and foremost, all of us know what exactly turbocharging is. But my idea of this video is not about explaining how turbocharging works. It's just about talking how the culture is taking over, how turbo is the next big thing. Now, the reason for this is of course the emission norms. The emission norms are becoming stricter and stricter, which means that displacement has to be reduced. That's the reason why downsizing happens. Just to give you a very big example of one of the most popular engines which has got multiple awards and also one of my favorite engines it's Ferrari's 4.5 litre V8 motor which is naturally aspirated revs all the way to 9000 rpm and it's done duty in the 458. Now with the 488 they actually had to downsize to a 3.9 litre twin turbo engine why because of emission norms efficiency and a lot of other parameters so just imagine if supercar and sports cars are facing this the normal regular run of the mill cars are going to face even more of this. That's the reason why now even smaller cars, mass market cars are getting turbochargers. So first let's understand which was the very first small capacity turbocharged engine in India. It was Ford's EcoBoost motor. So the one liter unit, three cylinder, which powered the EcoSport. Fab engine, really very nice. But obviously the prices were on the higher side because turbocharging is obviously expensive. You see, diesel engines cost more than petrol engines you know why because all diesel engines are turbocharged now turbocharged petrol engines also have different type of technology the good ones obviously have direct injection which i think almost every small capacity turbocharged engine is having except of course tata motors 1.2 liter unit as well as mahindra's 1.2 liter unit which does duty in the nexon and xuv 300 respectively the other game changing engine was obviously the 1.2 liter tsi which powered the polo the vento largely those cars only now what happened was uh, because of all the strict emission norms bs6 compliance vw had to say tata bye bye to that 1.2 liter engine and they got the 1 liter tsi today that 1 liter tsi has such a big responsibility it alone is carrying the weight of Volkswagen and Skoda in India because the Rapid is powered by the 1 litre TSI even the Vento and the Polo are powered by the 1 litre TSI just one engine powering all their mass market cars in fact the whole VW group has become petrol only and when I'm talking about the VW group I'm not just talking about Volkswagen and Skoda but also Porsche, Audi, Lambo has always been petrol never had a diesel engine but Porsche dropped diesel completely Audi has dropped diesel which is shocking and surprising because all of its competitors right from BMW to Jaguar, Land Rover and Mercedes obviously have diesel engines. Jaguar's kind of become slow on that aspect. I think Volvo is also going to drop their diesel engines completely. Major chunk of sales in luxury car segment comes only from Mercedes and BMW. However, now you see one engine is powering so many cars but you know the whole lineup is turbocharged for Volkswagen which is the Kodiak as well as the Karok as well as the T-Roc. Actually the T-Roc and the Karok use a 1.5 litre TS which again can be classified into small capacity turbocharged engine. How do you define small capacity? Any engine whose displacement is less than 1.5 liters becomes a small capacity engine. So many engines with turbocharging and direct injection is absolutely shocking because not only do they make more power, more torque, they emit less CO2 and are also more fuel efficient. Best example is the Hyundai Verna. The Verna actually has 50% more displacement for the 1.5 liter naturally aspirated petrol engine when compared to the 1 liter 3 cylinder turbo. Yeah, 50% more displacement yet more power, more torque, less emissions and better fuel economy. In fact, the turbo is the most fuel efficient version of the Verna in the petrol guys. Obviously, the diesel is unmatched. Till day, nothing can touch a diesel engine and that is a problem for the VW group because although they're betting big on the 1 litre TSI and all that, competitors are actually offering diesel engines, specifically the Hyundai Kia group. They're offering diesel engines. Diesel engines can never be replaced. You know why? Because when I'm driving turbocharged petrol engines, everything is fine. As long as you're driving normally, you can get more fuel efficiency. But you're buying a turbo for what? Obviously not for efficiency, it's for driving. And when you drive it hard and fast, it drinks more fuel. Because when the turbo pushes more air, the ECU says we need more fuel, resulting in just crazy amount of fuel consumption, unfortunately. But then you get the performance at least. Clearly, we can see that there's a big rush towards small capacity turbocharged engines. But it will be wrong to give credit to the Ford EcoSport because Fiat was the first car company in India to actually launch a turbocharged car, like a turbo petrol engine car, which was the Linea, of course, around 2010 is TJ, they used to call it. And then that engine was used in the Abad Punto as well as the Aventura powered by Abad with a lot more power, 143-ish. Meanwhile, Maruti Suzuki came with the 100 
100 horse power for 100 horse power why do you need a turbo charger you should be able to get 100 horse power naturally aspirated honestly but that engine is dropped right now the only issue i'm having is that none of the japanese car makers are having a turbocharged petrol engine it's really sad at least the small capacity turbo engines are not there with japanese manufacturers nissan is of course an exception because the kicks now gets a 1.3 liter turbo engine which produces 156 horsepower it's the most powerful small capacity turbocharged petrol engine honda doesn't have any turbo petrol in india toyota does not have any turbo petrol in india maruti does not have any turbo petrol in india right now even ford does not have any turbo petrol engine in india in the mass market segment these four car makers are the only ones which are not having a turbo petrol engine which is such a massive shock praise the guys who really adapted this which is hyundai they have five cars with turbo petrol engines five i kid you not five okay then i10 neos then the aura then of course the verna and the venue as well now all these four cars use a one liter turbo and the creta which i'm sitting in right now uses a 1.4 liter turbo petrol engine which is actually actually shared with the Kia Seltos and the Kia Sonnet is going to get a 1 litre turbo. That's like 5 turbo petrol engines from a car maker. That's absolutely insane. And which really makes me sad that Honda, which is known as the engine maker, the company which makes the best engines, does not have a single turbo petrol engine in India. But the surprising part is, it's not like they don't have the technology. They have it. Okay, they've got, I think, 1.5 litre turbo abroad. And uh, they recently had a 1 litre turbo, which actually came in the City RS. All the Honda fanboys got so excited when the new City was announced, the 5th generation. But that City RS uses a 1 litre turbo VTEC motor, which I think produces 122 horsepower, very similar to the 1.5 litre naturally aspirated VTEC, which is going to be available in India. But torque output is a big difference. Obviously, fuel consumption and all those things play a massive part but honda is not going to offer that to us in india unfortunately we're only going to get a 1.5 liter naturally aspirated engine but we are going to get a cvt gearbox yeah the japanese love the rubber band effect somehow meanwhile you know see hyundai is offering dual clutch transmission seven speed dct nissan kicks cvt japanese matlab cvt i don't know what obsession japanese have with cvt no torque converter they don't even have like a dual clutch but the koreans everything like i'll, I'll give you a very smart example before the iPhone was announced, Apple said that we were going to make a full touchscreen phone and everybody laughed at it. Blackberry was the company which was like absolutely going crazy with the joke around thinking that how can you make a screen like a full screen phone? Like this is a full screen phone. How will you be able to power it in the first place? Battery would go and all. Now when Apple actually launched it, when they opened the phone, they realized the phone has nothing but a full size battery. The whole mechanism is so small. Now why am I taking that example? That Nokia, Blackberry, all these companies are like, I to guy. This phone is not going to work. They were so confident. Nokia was so confident about their brand. Okay, you can compare Nokia to Honda today. Honda's confidence in India and Nokia's confidence back in the day was exactly the same. There was no difference. Why was that confidence? Because as a brand, Nokia was like the brand for smartphones. Similarly, Honda is the brand for cars right now. Okay, it's been since a few years. But competition was catching up so fast. Forget Apple. Okay? I don't know how to put Apple right now in the car industry because I think Tesla is the Apple right now. But in the mass market segment, if we talk about the biggest player which emerged from all this was who it was samsung what samsung did was they made their own os they had almost every sort of os so they had phones with different different os including their own os and they also adopted android Sab kuch kar so if you go to a samsung store or if you go to a shop where samsung phones are being sold whatever os you want they have everything on offer Samajiro, everything they have on offer similarly why am i saying this when you equate this whole thing to today's situation samsung korean to hyundai kia korean they are having the same thought so if you go to a hyundai showroom you will get a car with a naturally aspirated engine petrol you'll get a turbo petrol engine and you'll get a diesel also meanwhile the gearbox you'll get CVT, you will get torque converter, you will get DCT also. It's like Koreans have a thinking that sub kuch de do customers ko. let the customers decide what they want. Unlike Maruti Suzuki, who's come up with some calculator saying that you will save with petrol. Thing is, if I have to save with petrol, na, why will I buy a car in the first place? I will use public transport. I will go on a motorcycle. I will ride a cycle to work. I will not buy a car. Cars are bought with emotion. Cars are not bought as an appliance. So please don't get this whole uh, thing. Petrol running cost. You need to see how many years you're going to drive it because I don't care. I don't care how many years I'm going to drive or when I'm going to recover the extra money I put in diesel. I buy diesel. I prefer diesel only for one reason because diesel cars have excellent torque, low running cost. It's okay to invest one time and then recover the cost because before removing a petrol car, you're always thinking, oh my God, I'm going to burn so much fuel. Diesels, aisa nahi hai. Diesels, you rip apart. You drive it on red line. It doesn't bring as much fuel. Just to give you a perspective, when I was driving the diesel Creta, I was driving flight or driving in all the gears and all. I was getting a fuel economy of around uh, 10 to 12 kilometers per liter. Acceptable, okay? In spite of the price difference between diesel and petrol. However, when I'm driving the Creta Turbo Petrol, when I drive it, it is giving me a mileage of 6 to 7 kilometers per liter. And why is that low mileage? Because you have to understand, it's not just driving, it's about sitting in the car also. See, right now, I'm doing this video. I'm sitting in 
the car. As soon as this video gets over, I'm going to start doing the next video, which means I'm going to turn on the car. So I keep the car on for a long period of time for air conditioning. Sometimes when I go to shop, if someone's with me, I'm just going to leave the car on because I can't let them have window open. Sit. Air conditioning use core bindas. And I use so much air conditioning. I just leave the car on. The car is not running. So in that sense, that diesel economy comes into play big time. That's why I really appreciate the fact that how Hyundai and Kia have really adapted. I mean, they're offering you every sort of engine, powertrain, gearbox. You choose what you want. Not like Maruti Suzuki, who has only petrol engines on offer right now. No turbo petrols. They're betting on CNG. They want to do hybrid. There is it right now. Not to be seen. They don't have diesels. Why don't they have diesels? Now they will say obviously petrol is better, efficient, and all. Honestly, a company as big as Suzuki can churn out a diesel like this. But think about this. They invested so much money in a 1.5 liter diesel, which came in the CIS as well as the Ertiga. Why would they not let it be on sale today? Because there's obviously something wrong somewhere. The amount of investment needed for Maruti to upgrade that engine from BS4 to BS6 was massive. And they dropped the idea. In fact, just see how many years they took to make that engine. They were relying completely on Fiat power. And it's nothing wrong in relying on Fiat power because Tata is also relying as far as the big engines go. MG is also relying, but MG has a hybrid as well as a turbo petrol, 1.5 liter turbo petrol. And they also have a dual clutch gearbox. So dual clutch and hybrid and turbo petrol and something is something like all car makers are adapting on small players. But big brands like Honda and Maruti Suzuki are so overconfident about themselves that they're not offering us any of those. The thing is that I can understand if a car maker doesn't have the technology, they have to make it, you know, ground up. Honda has it. Honda has a turbo VTEC, a one liter turbo VTEC. They have the Honda City RS, which is only going to be sold in Indonesia or Thailand or other Asian markets. But in India, it's not going to be sold because Honda thinks that we Indians don't deserve it. And you know why? All of you are going to go and buy the city. And once you go and buy the city, Honda will be like, you know what? Apna engine is working so well. You don't need to get that engine only. The thing is, if consumers keep buying things without thinking that, you know what? We are getting inferior stuff here. Things are not going to change. In no way I'm saying that the city is inferior. It's a great car. I love the VTEC magic. I just think that if Hyundai is offering us an option of a one liter turbo petrol and Honda has the same engine, why are we not getting it? Don't we deserve it? Exactly. It's not very difficult for them to get it. Let's remove Honda for a moment right now. And let's remove Hyundai also. Nissan got a 1.3 liter turbo. You know why? Because they realized that their naturally aspect 1.5 liter is kind of hopeless. And that's why they had to get it. Now, same thing. That engine will go in Renault also. Triber is also coming with a turbo engine. Smaller engine not the 1.3 liter because that will be an overkill you accelerate the car will fly like crazy 156 horsepower in a driver which weighs that light no way it's the basic funda of this video is to tell you that how times are changing right now and how the brands which are adapting to newer technologies now obviously honda is also adapting to all the technology they're getting it to india is what matters the most you need to give indians all these technologies because why are we being left out i understand volkswagen has no option right now but only the one liter tsi that's why they're doing it but a brand like hyundai and kia which is offering diesel, petrol, CVT, IVT. Okay, CVT ko IVT bolte hain. Dual clutch, everything is there. Everything. Now, many of you will be like, Toyota is also not doing it. Remember one thing. Whatever Maruti does na, Toyota follows. Period. Toyota will never use its mind of its own now anymore because whatever Maruti does, Toyota follows. So if Maruti is like, okay, booster jet engine likar aate hain, Toyota will also use that booster jet in one of their cars. It's simple as that. There's no confusion around that. Now, this video has gone really long. In short, I've always been like, naturally aspirated, naturally aspirated, naturally aspirated. But that's only for V8s and V10s and V12s when they are naturally aspirated this fun for smaller engines like 1.2 liter engines 1 liter engines all those small capacity petrol engines you need a turbocharger you need a turbocharger period because the displacement is less with a turbo it makes a massive difference so I definitely feel that we need more small capacity turbocharged engines Mahindra is obviously betting big on it 1.2 1.5 and 2 liter M Stallion turbocharged engines with direct injection is coming soon to the XUV uh, 300 name is very weird I, I can't pronounce it xuv 300 it's also coming to the marajo marazzo 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 okay and it's also going to be coming to the new generation xuv4 obviously uh, discontinued the eco boost because it couldn't meet bs6 emission norms but they're going to use mahindra's engine in the upcoming eco sport as i can see going ahead in the future is going to be three brands all of them japanese which will not have a single turbocharged petrol engine a small capacity one of course maruti suzuki i doubt they're going to get a booster jet they're just going to do hybrid they're doing dual jet and all that they're doing just get a turbocharged engine why can't you do that it's not so difficult you're india's biggest car maker you're selling so many cars if you don't try to change the industry then what's going to happen if you're going to continue you should be setting benchmarks on every aspect okay with every car you launch you should do a new benchmark forget benchmarks yeah they did their cars don't have side 
airbags. Their cars don't have sunroof. It's shocking that India's biggest car maker is not offering a single car with side airbags, just two airbags, not offering any cars with sunroof. The Brezza is the only car in the segment which doesn't get a sunroof. Yeah, but Indians will continue to buy it. As long as you keep buying it, brands will never change, right? That's how it is. At the end of the day, it's not with brands, it's with anybody. If it ain't broke, why fix it? Remember this clearly. If it ain't broke, why fix it? Honestly, when the Qualys was selling so well, Toyota didn't care about it. They had to get the Innova, they got it because they had to, they got it. Otherwise, they would have continued selling the Qualys because it was selling. They had more aspirations of selling more units. Same thing, Fortune is selling so well. Toyota's like, yeah, I don't care at all. Why should I put a sunroof in the Fortune? I don't need to put a sunroof in the Fortune. Fortune is like that only. It's not about the importance or the lack of importance of a sunroof. It's like a consumer should get the option. For me, like right now, I've opened the sunroof, like the sun blind. It just gets me that airy feeling. There's nothing wrong with that, right? And if every competitor is offering it, either you reduce your price, that also Toyota does not do. That's the reason you see Toyota's attitude and Maruti's attitude is so similar that they are a match made in heaven. Anyways, this video was not about talking bad about any brand as such. It's just that as us consumers, we need to change our outlook. If we continue to buy inferior products, less safe products, products with less airbags or lack of sunroof and all those things, there's no reason a brand would change because brand would be like, our car is also the same. Why do we need to make any change whatsoever and i'm saying that for everybody personally what hurts me the most is honda being such a brilliant car maker doesn't give india the importance it deserves that's really very sad specifically they didn't get the hrv they gave us the brv their consumers played very smart nobody bought the brv nobody bought the mobilio right that's why they had to be eventually discontinued i think one of them is not yet discontinued but eventually they will be discontinued because consumers never bought it same with the brio that brio was a brilliant car that segment wanted diesel they did not get it so at the end of the day consumer is king if you're giving a product to other asian markets you need to give it to india as well period there are no two ways about it now don't come up with arguments like price is going to be higher this and that cut your profit margin i've always felt honda cars a little overpriced which felt justified back in the day but today the competition has become so good specifically hyundai kia is now become the benchmark you know why because they're offering so many features in their cars they are offering the best of technology is the 1.5 liter vtec motor in the new city better than the 1.5 liter engine in the world definitely by a mile but once we keep that 1.5 liter petrol engine aside and we get the 1 liter turbo in the fray, things change completely and I just realized this video has gone almost 20 minutes long with me just digressing from the initial topic of turbocharged petrol engines. I honestly feel small capacity engines need an inhaler and we need to have a turbo in a small capacity engine but eventually all the cars in the world, all the petrol cars in the world are going to have a turbocharger in it otherwise they're not going to comply with the emission norms. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. Do leave your comments below. Let me know what you think about this whole argument. Bye-bye.